The three-part process is a visualization technique I came up with to help us change patterns. Sometimes we get caught in a loop or we get stuck in a pattern where we're responding the same way or responding in ways that we don't like and we want to change that pattern. And visualization, if we do it in our minds, it actually has an effect on our, on our behavior. As someone who's been teaching dance and martial arts for many, many years, I can tell you how much visualization helps in changing habit patterns. It's an amazing thing. So the three-part process is if you have a, a response that you want to change, that let, let's say your kid hits, okay? Your kid, one, one sibling is hitting the other. And every time you get, you get upset about, by it, or reasonably so, right? So you get upset and you yell. Or you say, don't do that. You want to change that because you're trying to do non-coercive collaborative parenting where we don't respond with any wrongness. We just say, this is a hard moment. I'm here to help. Here I am. Um, I'm here to keep everyone safe and I'm here to support everyone. This is a hard time for everyone. And here I am. That's what we do, right? <laughs> we don't blame anyone. We're not doing any wrongness. We don't say, stop it. You can't do that. We don't hit because, you know, that doesn't really help a kid get in touch with the part of them that they... Uh, that they need to in order to work with this kind of stuff and all sorts of stuff. I'm not going to go into that right now. But let's say you want to shift the, the response. So we do the three-part process. So the, f the first step is to visualize how you normally would respond in the way that you don't like. So the kid, one kid hits the other one and you're like, stop it, stop it. How many times have I told you not to hit? All right, so then I visualize that and I see the kid hitting in my mind or I feel it. Visualization is different for everyone. Some people can see it. Some people, it's just a feeling. Some, you just think about it. Some, you can actually tell the story. It's, all, it's different for everyone. Um, but in your, in your mind, in your imagination, however that is for you, um, you want to see the, see the, the kid doing the, the, the pop, giving the hit, and then you yell out like that, oh, yelling. And I can see myself yelling, oh, why are you doing that? But I'm not doing it out loud. I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing it in my mind. I'm experiencing it in my imagination. So that's the first step, right? The second step... Now, the reason for that is I want to get in touch with the feeling and the, in the moment that brings that feeling because I want to shift that, right? It's not only the words I'm going to change. It's the feeling I have that I want to change, the response that I have that I want to change, physically, viscerally as well, right? And the visualization helps that with that. So the second time what I do is I exaggerate the angry response. And I, I make it as big as possible. Now, the idea behind this is, is I want to get in touch with the the deep feeling of it. I want to get in touch with it to a point where it's not even, I would never even do it. It's just loud screaming and yelling and throwing things and whatever, really, really, really exaggerated. And we don't do that for long, but long enough that you get the feeling of it. Now, here's the thing. For, uh, for, for both the first time through and the second time through, after it's finished, you want to shake it off. And you want to give yourself some love and some empathy and some kindness, okay? You would never, you're trying not to do that. That's why this is about, and I know it's hard on your nervous system when you yell. And I, and I love you. You're a good person. And I, and I give myself some love, right? And then I do the second round. And the second round's harder because I'm really angry, right? I'm letting it rip. I'm saying things I would never say. And, uh, and I find this quite a release, personally. Now, you have to do this in moderation because you don't want to get triggered to the point where you're, you lose your center completely right so you find the right amount for you um, but that's the second one now the third one is the ideal response and that's the one we repeat over and over the first two we just do once and then the third one we repeat over and over what's the ideal response well when my kid hits my heart opens and i see beneath the surface that they're struggling and i have no there's no tension that arises in me my body relaxes my heart opens and i go in there and I connect deeply and I say just the right thing. Uh, you know, this is a hard moment for you and I'm here for you. And, and I'm here for you and that was hard for you to get hit and it was hard for you, hard moment for you and that's why you did it and we're here together. We'll figure this out together. Lots of love to everybody. And you feel really good, you feel good and you feel strong. And then you kind of shake that one off. That felt good. But maybe some negative thoughts came in, maybe you know, some habit patterns came in because it's not always perfect. We want to practice again. So I do it again. This time I see the hit and I feel my heart open and I go over there with confidence. Shake it off, do it again, see the hit. Maybe I do that, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Then maybe I'll do the first two again. I know, to remind myself, okay, I just practiced the beautiful one over and over again. Let me practice the hard one. A couple of times and then you practice that one and it feels like oh oh yeah i know I, it feels familiar and you don't like it as much because you just practice the the one that you really want and you can feel the relativity 
And then you do the second step again, the exaggerated one, and you really don't like that. And then you do the other one again, right? So you do that in a cycle a couple of times, at least do it once. But if you have time, do it uh, in a cycle a couple of times. Do that a couple of times a day, the three-part process, maybe in the morning and, and just before bed, or just before bed, just do it once. Um, but you'll see that if you practice that a few times, then what happens is when that moment comes in, in the physical reality, you'll be like, oh, I, I recognize this moment. And your heart will open and you'll be much more uh, capable uh, at that point of, of managing it, right? And it's a beautiful thing. So that's the three-part process, friends. Please try it. First step uh, is how you normally negatively react that you don't want, that you want to change. Second step, you exaggerate. And then third step is the one you repeat over and over again is the ideal reaction, the feeling, the feeling in your body and also the words. And you imagine your kid responding, you know, so beautifully and feeling safe and connected with you. And it's just beautiful. And you just practice that one over and over again. And I do talk about the the three-part process in my paid course that I have on my site called uh, Recovering from a Parenting Mistake with maximum change and minimum shame. And I go into a lot of detail about how to take a mistake and really get the most out of it. The three-part process is just one of a series of things that I offer in that, uh, in that post, and you can, uh, in, that, in that course. And you can find that at MeaningfulIdeas.com. And my free course is also there. And if you take the free course, it's actually a coupon for the paid course in the free course. And the free course is a 40-minute video. The other one's like a two-hour video, including a meditation and a whole written component. Uh, the paid one, but the free one is a a, a 40 minute video separated into two 20 minute sections. And it's really great. It's called guiding without controlling also at meaningfulideas.com. So check that stuff out. Check out also, if you could follow me on all the social media, I'd appreciate it at meaningful ideas. And that's it, everybody. Peace out.